Today we have a very, 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 very special guest, Eli Lima, Elian, architect, artist, painter, extraordinaire, sister of one of the musketeers. Yes! A resemblance, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, today you could say we have some very interesting topics. Because we finally do for once in the podcast. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to be coming more often. Yes, please. Uh, come. We need content. Give us content. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how this one goes. Um, but yeah, uh, so as I said previously, she's an architect, an artist, painter. And uh, we thought that it'd be really interesting to have a conversation about architecture in Angola and in, in, in Africa. Also the art world in Angola. Yeah. And uh, see maybe the struggles, the good parts, yes. and uh, just to see how she thinks, you know? So, uh, okay. um, what do you guys want to know first? I can give you a little background of what I do. Yeah, that would be uh, great. Uh, yeah. What's she your even sounds like an artist, bro. God damn. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, uh, as you guys may know, I have a master's in architecture, interior design, and furniture design. And in my studies, I studied fine arts and design. So, I had like a ex Oxford, uh, what are the like, um, exams when we were like in high school. I know you guys did the back, but I did the IB. So it was different studies. And there we had to choose already, like, very early what we wanted to do. And architecture was something that I always knew, like, since I was a child. It's crazy. Like, even for me, it's crazy to think about. I've always known what I wanted to do. Like, when I was seven, I would move the tables around and things like that. Like, just... And I love it. And you're lucky in that way. Yeah. Like, like you mean, found your pur purpose, like, really early. But to be honest, I don't know if today I would actually advise people to study architecture. What? Really? Yeah. You think it's taken over by AI? I, I had a really bad study experience. <laughs> like, horrible. Horrible. No, but that might be you because you put a lot of exactly. pressure on yourself. But horrible in a, in a way. I did really good schools, like the best that I could do in the country, but it was just so intense. In my first year, I had 70 hours of school a week without counting the homework. Homework. And stuff. Yeah. So, so that was intense. Um, yeah, really fun, I bet. <laughs> Amazing. Um, but then the school I went to actually offered an art program that was like free for us because we are, you know, our architecture is actually the first art in the world. Before even fine arts, I mean, architecture comes first. Um, so before you have to actually make a space for a human, you need to understand how the human body works, which is so beautiful. And the school I went to actually taught us how to see architecture and art as one and as a very romantic kind of point of view. Mm -hmm. So I would actually be painting live models, what, three times a week. So I mean, it kind of translated into what you do now. Exactly. And it was actually like kind of obligatory to, to do it. It was forced upon us in a certain way because we actually had to learn how the human body works, how the curves work. And I actually started Damn. doing architecture based on the curves of the body. How the curves hey, wow. yeah, That is crazy. She was studying thick women. Yes. Uh, <laughs> at some point, I would draw over 100 women a year. like Just damn. just women? Yeah, just... I mean, I had some men, but the, hey, men, <laughs> the men were always so... Like bodybuilders? No, they were shamed. Uh -huh. Like body shamed. Actually, really? men were a lot more body shamed to be naked than women. Why? I don't know. I mean, sexism. Sexism. Actually, I think it's just the, we'll talk the, about the idea later. of like women can feel like more natural being naked in front of people or sexualizing their body or sensualizing their body. And men just don't. And if you look at it, men's body are not near as beautiful as women's bodies. Also, so I gotta, I gotta that. agree. Uh, I gotta <laughs> agree. <laughs> I mean, you look at a Michael B. Jordan. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I mean, he's mm. the exception, though. He's, yeah. the exception. Oh, he's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think we'll, we'll show some of your art while the video goes. Uh, goes yeah. We'll, on. We'll, do you think that kind of had an impact on the type of art that you do today? Like, why do you? love to draw women and their bodies oh, so much definitely because you definitely have that inclination towards like the natural female body specifically black women yeah. uh to empower oh definitely actually i give thanks to a teacher i had when we lived in Pau in the south of france um and she actually is the one that pushed me to do women she actually taught me 
She she literally told me I can pose for you like naked, and I was in high school. Whoa, that was yeah. on my tenth grade. I think I started doing arts. So since I was what fifteen, fourteen, I've been drawing naked women. So even before I got to school, I knew that's what I like to do. But then on that last year of univer of um, of high school, I had to pass the exams, and the art exam was sixteen hours long. Yeah, 16 hours long in front of a jury, so I could not actually, like, be with people and stuff. What do you do for 16 hours? Paint, live, like, God in front damn. of the jury. And I was the only person that passed with a C. Shit. <laughs> you passed with a C? I passed with a C. Damn. Everybody failed. Damn. Yeah, that's wild. Respect. Yeah, I left. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I got to school, it was just, like, a natural inclination to be search for something that had arts in it. I actually did an entire year of fine arts before I started I started architecture. I did a year of prepa and there all my professors were professionals. So they were all artists. So they themselves used to do nude work. Mm -hmm. So they would push me to do nude work. So basically so. art is all just being naked. Yeah, yeah pretty much. I like yeah. art. I like art. What, what do you think <laughs> about like cuz I mean it's kind of true, but what do you think about like the nudity in art that that is so like I guess attractive that so many people find so beautiful to the point that and they make it the centerpiece and their muse for their art. I don't even know how to explain. I feel like it will be the equivalent of like describing when you see Michael Jackson or like you know that love uh -huh. like that passion. You see Burna Boy live. Not Burna yeah. Boy, but like Beyonce. Okay. You know, there, there's levels. There's yeah, levels. there's levels to that. Um, I find it beautiful in a way that's like indescribable because I had to find comfort in art, mm -hmm. and I had to find comfort in what I was doing in that moment, which was drawing people and looking at them in a different yeah. way. And I actually had my art, my nude professor. He was one of the first ones in the country to do what he's doing. Like he released the book with all the models that actually I used to draw. And the book started being sold in the U.S. Like the models that I started mm -hmm. drawing. And he had a very romantic approach to the body. Mm -hmm. It was never straight lines. It was always curbs upon curbs upon like the fats and the, the way that your skin folds. And when you... Think like that. When you come into a, a, a room and you have to paint somebody and the person's in front of you, the professors would always let us know whatever you create in your paper is never going to be as beautiful as the muse that's in front of you. I like that. Yeah. So I always had this approach to everything that I do. And that's why I paint women because I can do so much and we can always erase and put another tray and, and like, you know, but it's always going to be so beautiful what's in front of us. I, I think that's the beauty of art. Like in this case, for example, you don't sexualize the bodies in no. front of you. No. You romanticize them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's it's the nature of the human body and how you appreciate how gorgeous it is without even thinking of other things, you know? And I think that's what I appreciate about art. When I see your paintings, there's a bunch of naked women, but the first thing that comes to mind isn't, oh my God, boobs. No. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's, well. <laughs> it's, there's uh, a few. <laughs> but it's... Uh, Damn, like she portrayed the woman body, like she gave her justice. You know, it's like yeah, it's angelic. You. There's a beauty to it, you know, and, and that's what yeah. I like. like you captured the aura of the person through I their nudity. So. I think that might be part of it. You know, like I guess being nude is a human's purest self. Like you're not. It's like you're fully exposed, and I guess to capture somebody's presence or aura. I guess part of it, like it would have to kind of be nude. You know. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. I feel so too. I feel like we're the most vulnerable and strongest, to be honest, when we're in the nude. You know? That's true. When it I'm really naked is. in my shower, I feel, <laughs> you feel all the power. <laughs> and then you feel all the vulnerability, you know, because this is this is all that we have. This is all that there is. Yeah. And the reason why I keep drawing naked women and I won't stop is because of the stigma. That mm. because we're drawing nude, it's sexual or yeah. Nothing to do. Mm -hmm. I don't have to draw boobs and it look like boobs for people <laughs> to like, you know, do something in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm afraid that it might happen, you know, because what I draw and 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 I paint women that are real, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I paint real people. Yeah. People might not know who they are, but I know who they are. And I don't want that disgusting idea to stick to to be associated, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be associated with my work. Do you think um, 
like I mean you've done you've done um exp expositions exposition, yeah. exposition sorry in Paris mm -hmm. and in Luanda mm -hmm. right and in Lisbon and in Lisbon yes do you see a difference in audience and how they receive it in the different countries and not only that how hard is it in the industry and for each for each country I mean my first exhibition in Luanda was in 2017. The first time I tried to do an exhibition was in 2015 when I started uni. And it was so intense. Like, I couldn't actually physically do anything because just the different barriers that in were... In Angola? Yeah, in time. Angola. The barriers that were, putting in, that were being put in me. Because I'm a woman and a cute woman and what are you trying to do? And plus you draw nudes. <laughs> I remember at some point I did a little exhibit in uh, Sefojor back in... Uh, Day. And I found myself surrounded by at least 10 men. Like I was 17. Yeah. 10 men that were all over 40, probably. Damn. You know, and like they were literally making comments, oh now you pay me. Oh, you're gonna like it. Like things like that. And I'm <sighs> and it's not random men, like people like if you yeah, say their it's, name, it's, you probably know yeah, who they are, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and like I got a lot of propositions, you know, come have a dinner with me and mm. I'll put your paintings. Yeah. In the museum, I literally had the proposition to have my paintings in the uh, Gushio Neto's memorial. Really? Yeah. All I had to do was I go for dinner. Goddamn nasty! I swear to God. All I had to do was go for dinner. Um, so. So you wouldn't take a free meal, to <laughs> man. <laughs> ah, I, would not. I think she'd have to give him dessert. <laughs> I would not. People, don't do it. Don't get the free meal. It's, it's not worth it's it. It's not okay. worth it's it. It's not a meal. <laughs> I mean, you gotta leave what's fresh for the fresh. You know, don't be mixing. So, um, I had a conversation with my parents. And I was like, you know, this is happening, this is happening. And my parents know my character. They know how I'm like a bit hot-headed. <laughs> <laughs> They were like, you know what you're going to do. You got it. I came back to Paris. I worked my ass off. I saved money. I went back to Angola two years later and I paid for the entire exhibition from A yes, to Z. I paid for the space. It. I paid for the cocktail. Balling. I paid for the people. I paid for the crew. I paid for everything. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say it with your chest. I gotta give the... <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> Don't need men for shit Okay exactly. <laughs> I don't know if I can swear I've been trying not to swear right, This entire show If you want to go show. ahead But whatever That's Try not to too much Yeah, yeah. Um, If you have to Go ahead Go ahead, you know? go ahead. If you feel it It's in your heart <laughs> <laughs> So yeah That was beautiful That's And nice. I It was one of the moments That I felt really fulfilled Because I had over 30 paintings Of black women All naked And all the paintings sold God Damn. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Back in the days, I remember on the first, just on the night, I made almost a million Kwanzas in 2017 really? just Hold out her. of my paintings. I was 17. Damn. Damn. Shit. 2017, Ryan, I was uh, what? Wait, 18, where's, 19. Where's my cut? 20, real quick. 19, 20, 19, 19. Whatever, you were really young. Yeah, I yeah. was 19. Yeah, uh, where's my cut? Uh, <laughs> yeah. where's If my chat I tell you <laughs> that all that money went into paying the. Paying for the next exhibit and yeah. myself. Ah, <laughs> uh, it was so money. worth it. It was so <laughs> worth it. All the proud about party. <laughs> it was so good, and it pushed me to want to do more. But then, when I tried to do the second exhibit, um, things were a bit different. Prices were up. Mm. Venues were more expensive. So now, I started doing more collective group works. Or with other artists yeah. because you know and I got also affiliated with Movart the gallery so now I'm part of their artists and um, hopefully I can you know bring my name with the gallery to Paris um, I wanted to ask you about um, I mean you we we were joking about it but the barriers that you had to come through to just even put on this exhibit to show your art um, I mean it's extremely frustrating yeah. so I just wanted to ask you what do you think Uh, can be done to maybe... I mean, simply you doing the exhibit is making it easier for the next people to do it right after you, you know? But what do you think can be done to make to remove these barriers for other artists, women or men or whoever, really, to be able to display their art to the world? Um, starting here or starting in Angola? Uh, in Angola. Or in... Yeah, in Angola, Africa. Angola. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be affiliated to a gallery. Like... like If you want 
regular jobs, regular events to be happening, you need to be affiliated to a gallery. You need to do a lot. You need to produce a lot. You need to run after people. I mean, the hustle, you know? Mm -hmm. And I kind of got tired of this hustle because, you know, I've been doing this since I was 17. I'm 26. Like, I still have a lot to do, but, like, I've I've done the hustle. I've been trying to do the hustle since I was 15 years old, you know? And when I was really young, I, I did something for myself, with myself, that made me proud after having gone through all these men and people that tried to to have a piece of me. So at this point... Like, I got a bit tired of working in Angola, to be honest, because opportunities are hard to get if you don't really hustle, like, hard. And I'm too intense in my <laughs> manners, in my opinions. I hate doing things that make me feel uncomfortable. That's the first thing. I hate doing things that make me feel uncomfortable. I do not have a problem with saying, uh-uh, bitch, I ain't going to do <laughs> Mm -mm, this is not for me. You go ahead. I'm not going to do it. So it's really hard for me to humiliate myself to a point where I know my worth. I've been working so hard and the person that's supposed to help me is not even halfway through my level and I have to yeah. put myself down to get there. Yeah. I mean, the places that in Angola that I could exhibit, they will ask for 70% of my cut. That's, that's and insane. I'm like, no, I would rather pay for my, yeah, myself yeah. and keep my money. Yeah. So this is what I do now. And this is what I'm going to keep doing. I'm going to find venues that I can. And I would rather be doing events than exhibitions. Mm -hmm. Like I would like what I'm doing right now in Paris, what I'm trying. So I'm going to have open days where there's art and music. And I'd rather be one day intense with you know, phot photographers and, and Instagrammers and people that are actually talking about my art than leaving it in a gallery where they're going to take 70% and maybe a few people will come and see and maybe not even buy mm -hmm. And then I'm losing money. I'm not really happy about what I'm doing. And, you know, mm -hmm. and in Angola, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of people that want to take, you know, that want to take advantage of your work. And when you said about paving the way for other artists to come, I hope, I hope so. I hope I'm influencing somebody to try harder, but this is not necessarily sure my are. goal. Yeah. yeah. No, I understand. Honest. I remember when we had a... Uh, like one of the conversations that I remember most is when we were talking about like being uh, sometimes unmotivated, you oh, know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we remember it was another conversation, <laughs> and um, like you, I mean, you're still so young, right? And you feel like you still have a lot to accomplish. But when you see that there's so much bullshit being thrown in your way, then it's like I don't need to be doing this. I could be doing something else, live comfortably, yeah. still doing what I love. So I'm just like my question to you is, uh, what what still gives you that fire to like you know what even through all this bullshit, all these men, all these whatever, I'm still gonna push through and do what I love. We don't have a choice, nigga. <laughs> we ain't got a choice. That's a fire answer. Yeah, just because the world is crumbling down for us doesn't mean we can stop. We cannot stop. I still have bills to pay, you know? You gotta put in that work. Yeah, yeah, you gotta put in that work. And the hardships that I went through in Angola are different than the ones I go through here, but I still mm. go through shit here, yeah. you know? Being an artist is not easy. Being a black artist is not easy. Being an educated black woman is not easy. Being a beautiful, educated... Damn! Woman, Nigga. I hype yourself up. I, like, I, hype yourself I swear up. to hype God, up. it's really hard. Damn. <laughs> and the hustle here is different than the hustle in Angola. No, but that's good for people to realize that it's not just in Angola that it, it's hard and it has no, struggles. Yeah. No, it's, it's everywhere. Not, no. You have everywhere. you got to face str struggles everywhere, but you just got to be strong it's enough to like at me and yeah. be like, well, what do you think? I got to do it. What do you think other people like are, that aren't artists? What do you think we can do to like support upcoming artists? Um, talk about it actually interact with these people, give them a platform to be themselves and to show their art. Well, here because you are. Here I am. <laughs> Thank God. I love you guys. <laughs> we love you. I've been waiting to come to this show for a while. Oh. Um, so you need to give them a platform and a space. I remember, I know, like, even though I've been doing this a long time and I have a bunch of people that are influencers in my circle of friends and that, you know, have means... You don't always put your friends in your business. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you guys could have, you know, I know you. It's been years we've known each other. And you could have chosen anybody else. Just because we're too close and, like, we're friends. Like, mm. ah, it's fine, you know? 
And this is the bullshit. This is the thing that we we never put each other yeah, up. We We're gotta, always pulling yeah, each other never, down. A lot of times, yeah. kind of out of jealousy. Too. Yeah. Like, you know, she's she's worth a lot. And if you try to help her out, maybe she'll... She's going to do better than better you. Better than me. Better. Like, that. that is... I, I hate it. And I felt that. Like, for a while, I actually felt this pressure. And I felt this kind of disdain from people. And I'm not somebody that believes in haters. For me, like, I don't have haters. What is haters? Who is haters? <laughs> we believe in haters. <laughs> <laughs> but... I have to start believing in it because they do exist. There are people that don't want your success just because of their own self-esteem yeah. problem and their own toxicity, you know? And I felt that. I felt like every time I would be helping other friends that are starting a business or something, like I'm always reposting your stuff in my story. I'm always mentioning you. And you never mention. I've stopped speaking to friends. That I've yeah. given so much because I'm an artist and you guys know me like I love so much and I cry and I scream when <laughs> I feel it. Like I literally feel everything like with my hands. You're intense, but that's good. I am. Like I'm I'm a human being. <laughs> but while while we're on the topic of helping each other out, how about you tell us a bit about your expo your um event that you're planning for uh, the twenty seventh? Ooh, I'm actually starting a new business uh in Paris. Uh, paint and drinks at Ellie's it is called and I'm starting to start I'm starting to make like events where hopefully I can invite other people to participate in different ways today um, the plan is to create a paint and drink in my my studio where people can come and drink caipirinhas and eat a little bit of feijoada that is made by um, Juliana Bonifacio who is the CEO of Atelier Bonifacio in Brazil Check they, her out on Instagram. Yeah, check, check her out on her Instagram. Out. We're going to leave her info here. She's very inspirational She's well. such an inspirational woman. And actually, during the COVID, her studio was able to feed 64 families. It's crazy. And with the help of uh, their voluntary, so that was amazing. And she's going to be making the caipirinhas and the feijoada <laughs> my place, um, also to promote her business and to promote mine. And she will be also bringing some fashion accessories and clothes from the artists that work in her atelier that make all this. So everybody's invited to come. Tickets are 25 euros, obviously, because we're making uh -uh, chain, <laughs> money, everything included, drinks, food, and um, art supplies. And if you don't want to paint or necessarily or eat, you can just come and check out what's happening, have a little drink, and yeah. No, but talking about that, because for her birthday was kind of the concept. Exactly. And yo, painting is so much fun. Even for people it that is. don't know how to paint, just hanging out with people and painting, it's, it's so much fun. You gotta give it a chance. Yeah. Like, yeah. It'll give you a chance to kind of express yourself exactly. in a different way, in a, exactly. in a Obviously, way you've never seen Everybody's before. not going to be a Lee or, or yeah. like <laughs> that, but like, it's fun just to express yourself and let your feelings out in another way, that, yeah. like you were saying. It really is. I was actually thinking that um, we could do a one together where we actually do a round table. We're painting and we're talking about Specific subject. Oh, that's cool. cool. Yeah. We're yeah. going to do that. We're going to do that. Maybe we that's can do cool. that one day. You know, I was like, to what you just we said. We paint naked bitches and then we <laughs> oh, talk, oh, talk about, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as we have a live, you Fully know, like, capture their aura, you know. Exactly. It's for the aura. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like to what you guys were saying, it's like, it's funny because when, when, you're, ki when you're a kid, your kind of natural inclination is to like, you draw whatever you're thinking in your head. Exactly. But as soon as you start growing up, there's kind of like this stigma around like if you're drawing, if you're if you're painting or whatever, it has to be a hobby, you know, like it, it can't be taken seriously. So what do you think about that stigma and how we can avoid it? Thankfully, I grew up in a family that does not have the stigma. Actually, my parents forced me to be an artist instead of being <laughs> an architect. Literally, like, really? cause, yeah, because I got accepted into an art school an art university when I was in between, you know, looking for places. In Strasbourg, actually, the uh, Ecole d'Art de Strasbourg, which is really good. It's a really good school. And I was like, I love art too much to be studying art. What do you mean? It's, it's intense. Like, studying art is intense. The the program, the, uh -huh. the lifestyle of, like, you know. I didn't know that architecture was going to do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> but it's definitely up there for the it is hardest hard. types of... But I really loved architecture. Like, it was my passion. It was something that I always knew I wanted to be. Maybe it was a bit narcissistic also, because I was like, architects are so pretty. And they, always, <laughs> they, and they always look so good. On the subject of architecture, kind of, we, we often talk about, like, in Angola, the architecture could be a lot better. Like, we don't really have no an order. identity yeah. 
when it comes to like our buildings, our structures, like if you look at a country like you know France, Paris, like just look up example. look up Spain and Barcelona specifically and drone footage, you're gonna see like there's a perfect yeah structure, like, like you know coordinated yeah. they like they all look kind of similar. They have their yeah. own identity when it comes to that, and I feel like we don't have that in Angola. And just like architecture in general, you don't really hear many people talk about that in Angola. I don't feel like feel it like has that importance. There's no prestige to it like in other countries. Yeah. Like here, if you're saying I'm an architect, there's a bit of like, oh, he's an architect, you know? There it's like, you're an architect, what do you do? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying anything, you know? I mean, I always thought that actually people in Angola had a perception of architecture as being something fancy. You know, it's yeah. always it's yeah. associated to luxury, for example. You, you, but the thing that makes me the most annoyed is when my friends are like, "Yeah, I'm gonna build my house, and I'm gonna call you to tell me the cow, the, the the pillows to use." Oh yeah. But then I'm gonna build it, and I'm like, "Yeah, you're gonna build your house." Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna build my house. Like I know. Then I'm like, then you're gonna call me to tell you the pillows. <laughs> I'm like yeah, and I'm like. Yeah, That's not no what res- I do. No <laughs> yeah. This is the general. I they don't really know what An you know does. And there's so Bro, many branches of architecture. I, I didn't know also. before you told me, like, you have to see, like, everything for the cables, for electricity, for everything. I didn't know about architecture, that. Architecture, I thought it was just designing a house. <laughs> everything <laughs> included, yeah. Like, it's really You have hard. to think about rain, like, where's the water going to go? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot you of do. things. Like, right now, I just had a, a project. I have a project in Rwanda. And the guy's not paying me, literally, he's not paying me enough for the work I'm doing. But it's a friend. It's a friend. So I'm doing it with all my heart. But I told him, you know... For what you're paying me, I will not do the electrical plans or the hydraulic plans because just that is, is a job by itself. Imagine 500 meters square where you have to say every every floor where the water passes, where the electric cable passes. There's the generator in Angola. You need yeah, the generator. Yeah. So if the power goes off, how it's like, nah, <laughs> pay me my money <laughs> and then I'm going to do this work. Pay me correct. <laughs> so it's really, it's really hard. It's a whole 350. Like you have... Just, I'll tell you a little bit of how yep. the architecture works. <laughs> so, um, first I have like a briefing with the client where he will tell me everything that they want in the house. So basically they'll give me a program. We need three bedrooms, two bathrooms, blah, 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 blah. In this specific house, the house is already being built because it's inside a condo. So the shell already exists. But the person who started designing, so the first architect, Made a bit of a mess. Like, if I presented this plan... As they usually do. <laughs> if I presented this plan at school, they would have been like, what? Leave, yeah. <laughs> Just because, like, you need to focus on the dimensions that you put inside that are, like, standards. That means that you cannot play with it. Like, you need at least 60, 70 centimeters between the wall and the table so that mm. people can actually pass. Wrong. One meter would be perfect so that people mm. can actually go. Imagine in a in a in a couple's bedroom, like your parents, the master's bedroom. You don't even have space to walk between the beds, like. Yeah. Mm. And the walk-in closet is literally just a drawer. Mm. A walk-in closet, like imagine our moms, like their closet is a drawer. Like no, they need an <laughs> entire us. room. <laughs> they need an entire room. So now I have to like redo what they've already done and create an extension in the in the garden. So it's 500 meters square, which in France is like a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's massive. It's 500 meters square, so it's massive. And I'm doing an extension like we have in our houses with like the veranda, open kitchen, um, uh, swimming pool, even just the plants for the swimming pool, like the hydraulic plants for that. That's a whole... It's really hard, yeah. It's really hard. It's a lot of work. So, you know, being an architect is about... All that. It's also about f- me finding all the furnitures and finding everybody that's going to be able to give me these furnitures and finding the suppliers and, and calling the shops and actually physically going and, and like the furniture, the materials, the, the textures, the feel, how the people are going to project themselves yeah. in this space. That's why you need to understand the human body <laughs> before you can actually make a physical space for them. You're, um, the, you're building the house, the house as much as the actual builders. Yes. Which is yeah. hard yes. work. Yeah. Do you think do you find more success in Angola through with art or with architecture? Mm, maybe with art. Really? With art, okay. Maybe with art, just because that's what I've been doing the mm. most oh, until okay. now. That's what you focused on. And architecture, I've been, you know, I I work in offices here, and I did actually no. <laughs> I've actually been doing a lot of architecture work in Angola since I was in school. 
since I was in school, I used to do internships and things like that. Like I built my parents' house. Uh, I I designed um, a bunch of bars in Angola, like for friends, and I followed constructions. And so there 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 is yeah. there are some you know some some works that I've done there. But I guess just because of art, I became more known because of the events that I used to do and yeah. things like that. That's what you focused on. Yeah. But I make way more money here. As an architect? <laughs> In both. <laughs> Making I them imagine. euros. Yeah. Um, I, what did I want to ask? Um, Last time, you, I mean, you told me you wanted to talk about girls with the D. Uh, no, 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 girls. No, but a specific. We're gonna talk about ladies. A specific. Uh, I forgot what it was, but it was. I mean, your brother said. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> what? Is, I forgot what, what it was. Now he, he said, "Can I verbatim you?" I don't know what I said. What he I said, don't, I don't remember. Let either. me know. Women are as stupid <laughs> as. <laughs> as Men are our quiz. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Don't, oh, don't take oh, okay. me out of context. <laughs> no, okay? kidding, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting conversation we have. Sequinha. And now that we. Guerra terrible. Bring the life, bring the life. Uh, yeah. Look, <laughs> we talk a lot about men and, you know. Care need some money. water? <laughs> <laughs> I have to formulate these things correctly, yeah. okay? Talk a lot about men, how they mistreat women, how they cheat, how they do a lot of shit, right? No, no. But there are also a lot of women that know about this shit and that take it and that instead of standing up for themselves, they'll like kind of be a victim. And it's not their fault, right? I'm not saying it's their fault. But a lot of times there are things that they could do to stop it. They could leave him. They could like tell him like stop this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stay for this. I'm worth more than this, you know? So I said women This is for the cheating. Yes, it's for the It's not for aspect. toxic relationships. No, 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 no that's no, different. No, no, no. That's okay. completely different. That's I, I said women know. are <laughs> <laughs> are as stupid hey. and are dogs. Hey, clip it! That's what I said. Because women love to say like 90% of men cheat. Like mm. you can't trust a man. And a lot of You want to give the example true. of your friend? Yes, I want to talk about that. And then you guys were afraid that I was going to get you canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Look, understand me, please, 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 please. It's understand. just yes. that. We didn't I think say I understand though. Okay. I'm following you. Well, I have you want to give the I have example? I have someone I know, okay? <laughs> Yo, you got to give it with little, you know. That, that's someone I like, know. Oh. A girl, she was cheated on. She's in a toxic relationship, mm. and she was cheated on, right? And she found out, and her boyfriend, he told her, I cheated on you so that you could know the pain of being cheated on so that you never cheat on me. What type of self-respecting woman is going to stay with a guy like Yo, that? that's crazy. And I know a lot of situations like that where you... You know what the guy does, and you still stay with him, and you know you're worth more, and you I can mean, find better. Actually, depends. Okay, okay. You need to know the in which community, because cheating is relevant. They were in huh? depending on the white. community. Like that's true. You know, not what everybody's monogamous. Oh no, but they uh, no, but they in monogamous. this case they are. It's like, a couple. No, but if it's polyamorous, it's not cheating. Not necessarily polyamorous. Literally, mentally. Monogamous, like <laughs> there's some people that cannot, oh, mentally, physically, be in a closed relationship. You yeah. know, sure. like the entire Angolan society. <laughs> hey, I'm Angolan. I'm Angolan too. Hey. I don't cheat. Yeah. So, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Say that to me on live. Go. Mm. Hey, hey, it's not. <laughs> hey, at least. Damn. No, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. Depending on the society, we have a different approach to closed and open relationships, monogamy, polyamory. Like Africans are not like that, you know. Back in the days, we used to have men yeah, used to many, have yeah. how many wives? Yeah. Even women, you could have different husbands. Have different like partners. we come from a very matriarchal society where women had a lot of power too. And you, you look at relationships in Angola today, cheating is not going to be necessarily the reason people will break up. It's not. Yeah. yeah. And I don't Should even be. really know if it's <laughs> cheating. But the thing is, is, like, if it was just like being with other partners and it doesn't hurt the other person because we're okay with it, mm -hmm. all good. But a lot of cases, like, 
we decide to be together, the man goes and cheats. I'm just using the yeah, man because yeah, yeah. it's usually the case. But the man goes and cheats and the woman is really hurt. And yet she stays with him. Why? Like, because women... And well, to, um, in yeah. today's day and age, there's this, like... Feminism, right? It's like, I know my worth and yeah. I'm not going to accept less than what I deserve. It's, but it's not at the bare minimum. And it, cheating is not the bare minimum. You know, you got to I mean, do more than that. But it's not as simple as I that because get, after their children are involved, there are... I no, can no, no. get it when there are children yeah, involved but before you, when you're married, when you've been together for Yeah, but her case, your friend years. is just... Uh, yeah. when, you're, when you're freaking 18, yeah. you have yeah. such a long life to g- live. You've been together for a few months. Like, it's not worth all Let me pain. tell you something. Mm. I don't know if I've ever been cheated on. I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> but if I were... Now, who would cheat on you? Such a beauty like that. Hey, yo. That's what I said. <laughs> Beyonce was cheated on. That's true. With Becky with the good hair. <laughs> Goddamn <Damn>. Beyonce. <laughs> Shakira so who was am I? On. Shakira... Damn. God damn. That's the problem. Fuck PK. Yeah. If I see him, we'll that trash kid. We've talked about that. That clip went viral too. Yeah. Shakira. Shakira, Shakira. (laughs) What? What do you need to not cheat on a no. woman too? Like it's not, it's not about people, guys. I think it's insecurity. You, you need to understand cheating is not about people. It's not about the other person or your partner. It's like no, but like, why don't Nigga, you leave? I like. <laughs> I, I, I had to do a lot of work. Okay, I had explain. to understand different points of view because, like, Angolan dads and <laughs> light skinned men. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> You're targeting whoa. someone. Are you targeting someone? Sure. <laughs> uh, and leave. Yeah, you gotta go back on what you just said. Light skinned. This is still men. our podcast, okay? Huh? Light skinned men. men. Hey, yo. <laughs> No, no, no. Separate, what is this? Separate these two. Segregation. <laughs> no, you guys have a real men. problem. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know what it is about you guys. Light skinned men. Beautiful men. We love you. But Thank you. Uh, no, no, there's no but. There's no but. Black men cheat as much as us, okay? You're black. We exist. You're just light skinned. Actually, technically. I'm high. No, I don't know. I was gonna. Whatever. Oh, we're gonna start this? Oh my no, god. No, no. We don't have time. Back to girls. Let's go. Let's go. For this. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> anyway, so like the whole cheating situation, yeah. like you have to have a different point like of view. You need to sometimes separate yourself and like get out of your body and look at it from like, you know. Like, imagine if you're in a family th- that uh, there's a lot going on. Yeah. There's like a lot of cheating and whatever. When you're young, you're gonna feel affected by that. But then you start growing up. Like you get into your teenage years and then your adulthood, you're not necessarily going to do what has been done in by you know in your family, if you have that conscience to be like okay cheating is wrong yeah. whatever. But then you're gonna start dating, and when you start dating, you're gonna be like wait a minute, cheating is wrong, but but it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> but like you're gonna be susceptible to do it maybe you know because you're gonna be in that world and. The the no, no listen, you know. I can actually. Get hey yo, chill. We let hey. you. I'll explain. No, okay. yeah. We don't have much. It's not that you're going to do it, but it's just that like um, you're tempted. You're not tempted, but your mentality changes when you grow up and when you actually start seeing things from like an adult point of view, where you're like, wait. This is why so many people today, like couples, they cheat, but then they stay together because there's other shit going on in the relationship that you don't know about. And that cheating is not necessarily the end of the world. Like, nigga, there's worse things you can do to yeah, me. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. But you see, <laughs> but so, and then your point of view changes. Then you wonder, okay, how come this lady stayed with her husband and she cheats on him every day? You're like, because he bought her a fucking mansion. <laughs> but is yeah. that- well, that's but, what I'm saying. That's like the example. No, no, no. no I know the bougie example. But that's what we example. always talk about. Like, okay, there's a lot of men that that uh, would prefer. A woman not to be as dominant as them. I'm gonna try to use that yeah, lightly, yeah. but like for example, like the dynamic between a man and a woman, I think now is so complicated because like like women still partially want a traditional man, but what is a tradition? What what is a modern man? What is a modern woman? Right? And for me personally, I think at times women just as much as men only stay in the relationship because of comfortability. Like, and that's why personally. 
I wouldn't want, like, I would want a woman to make, to be as much as a breadwinner as I am and stuff like mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. I don't want you to be with me because I bought you a nice house or for yeah. material reasons, you know? Yeah. So cheating, I think if, if, if uh, in the example that you gave, mm -hmm. if I didn't buy you a mansion, would you accept the cheating? Probably not. So that means that, like, that relationship is only, is only worth it to you because not of what I bring, like, uh, as a human, yeah. but as materialistic wise. People that cheat and bring a lot home, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, guys, at least, so, so at least, at least, point is if you can buy a girl a mansion, it's okay. You can cheat. Like, the don't, you say, don't humiliate her it. or shit like that. Like, no, whatever. What the hell? Though, if you no, guys talk about it between you and it works, that's okay. No, but to that's be the honest, thing. just do you. If you talk with a person and you're okay with that, what the fuck are you that, saying, bro? Yeah. <laughs> do you? No, but if you talk, if you talk cheat. to the person, don't cheat. If you talk to the person before, it's not cheating. It's just you you have an agreement that you can be with other people. But I'm saying like. You guys are together, and you go and see another woman without. Well, how did like, we get on to cheating? I don't know, but don't know. we got here. It's your fault. You talked about women. I, I actually. And you think whatever. about cheating? But I, it wasn't me. Hey, hey, the conversation uh, flowed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not okay to cheat. It's not okay to cheat. Would you cheat? It's not okay to cheat. Now, would you cheat? I would not cheat uh, if I don't have a good reason. Unless it's for a le <laughs> whoa. Unless and I think we're gonna end the episode right now. Wait, no, before you like finish. Rihanna. What do you mean? I would cheat for Rihanna. Oh, me too. But that's <laughs> see, everybody. That yeah, but that's, yeah, but no, that's that's different. normal. That's not even. If cheating. my partner Actually, says no, you just I'm have pissed. to. Uh, you need, Pippa. I don't want to talk too much because I'm gonna get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you need to understand also the dynamics of relationships. There you go. Yeah, y'all are too young. You've been single for too long. You've been dating for too for long. for too long. Yeah, yeah. dynamics of and, relationships. <laughs> there are a lot of I'll open relationships them. nowadays. There are a lot of open relationships. That's true. You know. Yeah. So anything yeah, you wanna depends on the situation. But yeah, you wanted to talk about temptation really fast. Just no, no, it's what okay, about it's temptation? Okay, it's okay, it's okay. No, 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 go. Okay, we're guys. Well, Literally unfortunately, I know what you want to talk about. Time, but we're gonna have her on for a second episode. We're gonna do that thing <laughs> you said in the future. Yes, let's the, do the, the, the painting, painting thing. Talk. Yeah, we'll make, you, we day. can make that a video. Yeah, that's what that was the goal. Oh, okay, my bad. Yes. So yeah, so if you enjoyed this episode, like, subscribe. And Comment forget. down below and check out all of her stuff. If you can fly to Paris for her open day, freaking yes, do it. Yes, please. It's this Saturday for anyone in Paris, if you're interested. Yeah. Saturday. By her art. Saturday 24, 27. Mm -hmm. Saturday 27. Um, Between 2 and 4 p.m. Links and everything are on my Instagram, which they will put in down below. the mm. description. Who told you that? You don't know <laughs> that. It's not a choice, nigga. Damn. All right. All right. Bye. Peace. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.